Welcome back to another episode of How to Become an Obstacle Buster. I'm your host, Warren Wandling. The show that's dedicated helping leaders and entrepreneurs to overcome their obstacles, build resilience, and achieve success. Well, thank you for listening. Before I introduce you to my guest today, I want to share with you a review from one of our listeners. L.K. Jensen says, tons of obstacle busting value right here. Warren is a great host who presents great insights about how to bust our own obstacles in life through his amazing guest. Do yourself a favor and subscribe and listen to this show. You'd be glad you did. Well, thank you for that review, LK. And uh, really appreciate you going over to Apple Podcast and leaving a review because it really does help other leaders be able to find this podcast. So head over to Apple Podcast and leave a review. And thank you again, LK, for listening and leaving a review. So I have some great guests lined up for this year I'm really excited about. So make sure that you subscribe to our show wherever you listen to podcasts so you never miss an episode. And today I'm really excited because I'm going to be sharing with you a repeat episode from last year, but I think it's one that's really going to make a great impact as you start your year. Before I introduce you to my next guest today, I want to make sure that you're aware of two new resources to help you to increase your productivity, clarify your purpose, and improve your communication skills. The first one is our Facebook community called Leadership with Purpose. So it's a private community. So go to Facebook groups, search for Leadership with Purpose, and send a request to be invited into the group. There's a few questions for you to answer, and then love to have you a part of that community of other like-minded leaders. Our team is really excited about launching the Next Level Coaching Roadmap. It's a group coaching format, so highly recommend that you check that out and to get your questions answered. If you're a leader that's experiencing any of the following, this is definitely a group format that's going to help you break through to your next level within leadership and your career. So if you have any fear about moving to the next level in your leadership career, this is a group that you'll want to connect with. If you have loss of confidence, if you're kind of confused, like not knowing really how to tap into the hidden job market, if you have a desire to really to grow to the next level, this is definitely a group that you'll want to be able to to connect with. If you want to know how to stay calm in a high stress environment, there's going to be strategies, tips, and resources, conversations all around how to develop um, skills to do just that. So if you want more information, head over to warrenwandling.com slash the next level coaching. And uh, in there on that page, you'll notice uh, more information about the coaching roadmap, but also there's a link for you to schedule a phone call with me so we can help um, really figure out if this is the right fit to helping you take your career to the next level. Again, that's warrenwandling.com slash the next level coaching. Well, welcome back to another episode of How to Become an Obstacle Buster. I'm your host, Warren Wandling, the show that's dedicated helping leaders and entrepreneurs to overcome their obstacles, build resilience, and achieve success. And I have a great guest, actually, to do just that, Jeremy Kupacek. Welcome to the show, Jeremy. Warren, so good to be with you. Thanks for uh, the opportunity. Yeah, I'm I'm looking actually forward to our conversation today. Um, As yourself as a powerful communicator, serial entrepreneur, and content builder, Tell us about your business. Yeah, my business is basically a content business with a technology platform that figured out how to scale leader development in the 21st century to busy adults who are cynical know-it-alls who don't read anymore. I love that, right? Um, And certainly a key area, right? Because if we we develop the leaders, everyone else gets better because of that. That's it. That's it. And so, So what is the greatest obstacle your clients encounter? You know, for me, when I look at a business, I look at a business as strategy, capital, and people. So the business model, the capitalization, and people. Often, which is most cases, it's the people who always screw it up. And the the view from the leader or from the owner's perspective is you can't find good people these days. And the reality is, well, people can be an asset if you've learned the skill set of learning how to grow healthy leaders, learning how to grow people, learning how to build a culture uh, where people become an asset are not viewed as a liability. And so people, it would be typically the biggest obstacle that I uh, run into. 
So people, I mean, since that is one of the key um, assets within an organization, it could be at the top level, like in the C-suite, or do you start lower in the organization developing leaders uh, to making sure the organization's healthy across the board? Yeah, so we figured out that really the key to an organization is the team leader. Um, if you take a company of any size, if you had 400 employees, then let's just say you had uh, 30 team leaders. If you have 30 team leaders, the team leader is the secret sauce of an organization because a company is nothing more than make a makeup of teams. And teams are a flywheel. They're either spinning or they're not spinning. They're either healthy or they're not healthy. And a team is not healthy typically from the team leader because that leader might be a dominating leader, that, that leader might be causing all types of issues uh, that don't need to be, maybe they don't know how to lead people. So if you focus on the team leader and get them healthy and get them to scale, then your people, the chances of people becoming more engaged go up because uh, you know they're not being dominated. They're not, being, they're not working for someone they have to work for, they're working with someone they want to work for. Right, because we all know that people don't typically leave organizations, they leave leaders, right? So what is a strategy with like in that level, that team leader, one that's really developing leadership skills that might be developing their own EI or communication skills or influence, right? What are some of the strategies that you use to maybe measure that healthy organization or that healthy leader? Well, it starts with the mindset. Uh, Mm -hmm. So number one, qualitatively, if you're the, a boss, you kind of know what you think about the team leaders. You may not be right, but you have, a, you have a, a little inkling that maybe someone is not very healthy or someone's got bad people skills or what have you. But what we start with is we start at Giant. We, we give people the opportunity to understand their Sherpa. The Sherpa mindset is uh, take uh, Mount Everest. On Mount Everest, you have climbers. People pay tens of thousands of dollars to climb Mount Everest, but what they are put into, they're put into groups of four or five led by Sherpa. Mm -hmm. Now the Sherpa are a native to the Himalayas. They are born at 14,000 feet. They have a genetic predisposition to the altitude. So they can get you to the next level because they're really good. But the Sherpa is the healthiest person on the mountain. Uh, I always like to joke and say, you Mm -hmm. don't want to follow an asthmatic Sherpa. No one, (laughs) no one wants to. But in the same way, no one wants to be put on a team with an inept team leader and someone that you have to work with, don't want to work with. So the idea of a Sherpa is they go up and they climb ahead of you. They they get the ropes set, they get the ladder set, then they climb back down and get you, and then they climb with you to the next level. So you have to have team leaders that are healthy. We have a 100X indicator, 100 stands for health, X stands for multiplication. And we have a process that lets you know how healthy a team leader is. And then the X is multiplication. Some people are plus people. They're positively proactive. Um, Some people are negative. Some people are divide. Hopefully you don't have any divisive team leaders. Mm -hmm. But most of them are between 60 minus and 75 plus. And so we try, there's a journey to get them to think as a Sherpa mindset to get to the next level. Wow, that's fascinating, right? Certainly with all the new research around neuroscience around the powerful of the mind, right? Uh, and, and knowing that that necessarily isn't a, a soft skill anymore, really. It's the, it's the true, it's the kind of like the secret sauce to really train leaders to be able to be that Sherpa, to be healthy within the organization. That's right. So what, what is you- a key strategy that contributed to your success building your business? Well, so uh, failure is a key strategy. Uh, I worked, uh, well, a couple of things. I worked in Russia. I lived in Russia in the early nineties. And, um, I, I have, my first book was called making your leadership come alive. And it's all my mafia stories. I lived above a mafia group. Uh, I was, I had a client assassinated. Um, I was there in a coup attempt. I watched 70 years of communism and what it did to people. It created an abdicating apathetic culture. It didn't create empowerment. It didn't create Mm -hmm. engagement. So it really framed me in my early 20s. And when I came back, I ended up working with a great uh, liberating leader, a great company who who poured into his leaders, their leaders. And I mean, it was an unbelievable season. And then we got bought and I worked for the private equity group. And then I became uh, one of the leaders of the private equity group. And we bought 17 companies in three years. 
And when we did that, I watched how you could kill culture overnight because mm -hmm. you viewed people as a liability. So part of my successes were actually part of the failures I was a part of or watching failure, whether it be government or whether it be a private equity roll up that didn't work. And um, when those two things came to play, I'm like, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to get people to get engaged and become an asset without it being kumbaya sessions, something that wouldn't be cheesy, but something that would work. And that's really what we've, we've done. So then in your opinion, how do you really unlock the potential of a leader? So the way you unlock is number one, if I am their leader, if I'm a boss, mm -hmm. they have to know that I'm for them. If they think I'm against them, they're going to put a wall up to self-preservation. Or if they think I'm for myself, they're going to get jaded against me. So I have to be for them. That's number one. Number two, do they know, do I know their voice? Do I know their personality? Uh, we use the five voices, which we created. It takes uh, Myers-Briggs, Jungian typology. It makes it so much simpler hmm. and, um, and it scales. And so we know, um, I know who my team leaders are. I know that Mike is a guardian. I know Tracy's a guardian. I know Bronson's a pioneer. I know, so every person I work with uh, under me, if you will, then I know their tendencies and their mm -hmm. wiring and I speak their language and they know me as well. So that creates relational trust. So because I know who they are, I can communicate more effectively and they trust me. That's the key, so, uh, high support. Mm -hmm. Do they know that I'm for them? Am I providing everything they need, need to do their job? And do I know them well enough both personally and in personality that I can know their tendencies. That's a secret to unlocking, whether it's your teenager or whether it's an employee. Well, that's interesting. So it goes along with the same philosophy that every employee wants to be needed and known. And so by using your approach, you're really developing the leader to draw that out in each individual employee then. That's right. And, and, and to do it in a way that is not going to require you to go get certified for uh, six months and mm. the difficult landscape, we're using technology and all we do is we certify people, whether you're, if you're an internal, if you're a customer, a mm -hmm. client, and you want to get certified, then you have someone called a catalyst, an internal specialist, or if you're an external consultant, then you add giant to your mix, but we certify people to teach people to scale people. So it's a, it's a fun, it's a fun business of multiplicate, multiplying magic, mm -hmm. the multiplication of the magic that's in a person unlocking the potential. And we teach people how to create that system to do it. Wow. Exactly. It sounds, it sounds like magic, right? It probably, it sounds like it, but because of the philosophy that you follow, once you start unlocking it, then it probably catches fire across the different levels of the organization that because they want to follow the same type of leader because people want to follow something bigger than themselves. And it sounds like that's what you create also within the organization. Yeah. And, and we do it with, uh, we, we do it with simple language, common mm -hmm. objective language, because the key is, uh, everyone, um, subjectivity is where all drama comes from. Objective language is, is something where we use tools and we use tools as, as mirrors. So if mm -hmm. I showed a mirror in front of you and go, Warren, you've got broccoli in your teeth. Mm -hmm. No, really, you got broccoli. Do you see it? Yeah, and so, yeah. And I, I probably did, do. Uh, <laughs> but if you did, uh -huh. uh, I'd go, hey, do you want to get it out? I'd rather if you got it out versus me. But giving people the chance to see their own broccoli and their own teeth is the way that people change. Not subjectively going, Warren, you need to step it up. You know, mm -hmm. I need you to get to the next level. You got it. Are we clear. And you're like, I have no idea what you just said other than you're mad. Yeah, and right. And so in our case, we create common language. I said, all right, Warren, there's, uh, and we use visual tools because a visual tool can be drawn on a cocktail napkin. No one's going to go read a bunch of books right now, but mm -hmm. they will learn a tool on a napkin and they'll teach it to someone else. And when they teach, they learn. So if I said high support, high challenge, best leaders in the world, bring high support first, and then they bring high challenge. Where are you with your kids? Where are you with your teammates? Do you bring in more challenge than you are support? Then you're dominating. If you're bringing more support than you are challenge, you're protecting. Where are you? So I can give them common language now that everyone in the organization gets and understands. 
And it's so much easier to lead when everyone is using the same vocabulary. Yeah, I love that in reference to setting that roadmap for them to follow, to really teach them how to lead. Like most people don't know how to lead in general, right? They learned from the leader that led them. And if they were an unhealthy leader, they just follow in the footsteps because it seemed to have worked, right? So it sounds like you're giving a roadmap to really develop that healthy leader. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So exactly. I'm really curious. I know in the book that you mentioned earlier, Come Alive, you had a, um, the, some of those great experiences in Moscow. What was the greatest impact from all those experiences that, that you lived out? Um, I, I learned at a very young age um, how influence worked. And I realized that influence is a combination of character and chemistry with competency and credibility. And it's both of the, you have to have all four of those things for someone else to lower their wall, um, to go, you know what, you're influential. You're someone I want to be around. And I learned it the hard way. I learned it, uh, as a young kid full of vigor and pride. Mm -hmm. And I was working in a really tough environment. And so I had to learn. Uh, who am I speaking with? Uh, if they're a thinker, they want to lead with competency and credibility. If they're a feeler, mm -hmm. they want to lead with character and chemistry. So I very quickly started to people whisper and I started to kind of pick up the other person's personality. And then I started to adapt and speak to them based on either feeler or thinker language. And then I'd come back and fill in the gaps with the other piece. And so that was a key component of what I learned in, in my Russian experience is how do you, how do you become influential at any age, uh, in any circumstance? Impactful, right? Cause not everyone has to put themselves into that same type of experience that, that you experienced right at Moscow, but even in their current career, or if they're leading an organization now to be able to, um, be more self-aware of how they're leading in that process. And are you really reading the person? understand the communication styles and how they present and how they like to learn and then be able to connect with them on their level. Yeah. And once you figure it out, it's like, uh, for instance, when I lived in Russia, when I would speak Russian to them, mm -hmm. uh, it, when I would speak Russian, they would open up like, Oh, you're speaking my language. Mm. It's the same thing with employees. When you know you're speaking to a pioneer, again, I'm speaking five voices here, but you, mm -hmm. a pioneer, which would traditionally be like an ENTJ in Myers-Briggs. Okay. But a pioneer, if I speak to them in their language, they're going to appreciate it. But if I speak to them as a nurturer, like an ESFJ, mm. they're going to go, oh, get to the point. Yes. My goodness. Yeah. So Hurry up, please. knowing who you're speaking to uh, is a competitive advantage. Uh, it's not, it could be used as manipulation, but if you have the right intent, then you're not manipulating. You're literally um, being relevant. Mm -hmm. Well, I know some of our, our listeners might be interested in actually joining and in, in getting involved in the career of coaching. And I know that's one of the things that you do. Um, if one of our listeners wanted to say, hey, I'm really curious about what is that first step of becoming a career coach? or a coach in the, in the industry, what would you suggest would be that first step? Yeah. So it's really simple. We have a, uh, we have a certification process, but we have a video that, that you can watch that just goes, Ooh, that's me or that's not me. Mm -hmm. And for some people, they use it as a side hustle and some people, they add it to their world and some, they start a business. They want to create a business and we help them do that. But if you go to giantcoach.com slash obstacle buster, Mm -hmm. So we just made it for your audience, Warren. Oh, awesome. giant, Giantcoach.com slash obstacle buster. You can find the certification details, but you can also take the free assessment. You can take the five voices for free and you can actually find out what your own personality is as well, which is really fun if you haven't done that. Uh, and then there's videos and all types of resources that will help you specifically know yourself so you can lead yourself. Fantastic. I'll definitely make sure that it link is in the show notes. Awesome. So as we discussed already, uh, leadership is definitely influence. And what's one of the top strategies that you share with your clients to help them increase results? Um, yeah, to increase your influence. So we've talked about knowing yourself to lead yourself. But what? But in that process, um, it's people, if they see you are changing and they see that you're someone who's really going after your own 
uh, growth, they'll be more uh, open to, to listening to you, to following you, and they'll want to do what you've been doing. So you can't give what you don't possess. So we have everyone go through kind of a, a base camp process to know themselves so they can lead themselves, to find out what my tendencies are, to find out what my patterns are, good and bad, and then to figure out what my typical actions or reactions are. So I can change my action, which changes my consequence, which shapes a different reality. And so what we do when we unlock potential in people, what we're really doing is we're helping them know themselves extremely well, teaching them how to communicate their own failings and helping other people. And they become invaluable. Their influence goes up, their reputation goes up. It's, it's the combination of personality meets emotional intelligence with hard people skills. And when you get those skills all put together, you start to grow the core of who you are. People want you on the team. They want you leading teams. They want to open doors. They want you on the, the, to help them. And that's the benefit of what we do. Yeah, it sounds like that can be, well, it, it, I'm sure the experience is transformational. But your clients that go through that and you discover the ahas of looking past, I mean, the gap from a coaching perspective, where they are and where they want to be, right? And you close that coaching gap for them. I'm sure they experience that kind of a transformational experience as a leader. Absolutely. And, and we just simply use technology in a way that becomes so relevant and not mm -hmm. clunky. So the giant TV platform is really, really robust and it's really good. And it's like Peloton for leaders. And you're, all of a sudden you're, uh, so companies are using it to scale and they're finding that, um, it's affordable. They don't have to go and to a day seminar, mm -hmm. you know, that, that just doesn't work. Uh, and it's, it's a, we're in a micro learning season. And, um, so it's fun. It's a fun, uh, it's a fun challenge to figure out how to be a 21st century leader development business and to make it work. Yeah. Which I think, as we know that there's that gap, right. As baby boomers age out of the of the workforce, we're going to need strong leaders to be able to fill those gaps. And it sounds like you have a great tool and system to be able to scale leaders to be healthy in organizations. Yeah. And the fun part is people always go, well, who, who are your competitors? And we're like, we really don't have them any because anybody can get certified and use it. If you want to use it, add it to your repertoire, add it to your system. So a lot of people will bolt on giant on top of it because it's not very expensive. It's less than $250 a month to be able to get certified um, on Giant and use it. And inside organizations, it's less than $200 a month. So when you think of that for a business, it's just, it's very affordable. So we eliminated time and mm -hmm. money as any obstacles to your obstacle buster. Yeah, uh, right. So that, so that people can, you know, they don't have excuses. Uh, those are not no longer excuses to at least try it out. Exactly right. So because the, the some of the old training models in in the years past, certainly when we experienced COVID now, more people are online, experienced the online learning that they're starting to involve and getting comfortable with a new process of how they can learn. Absolutely. So I believe that success leaves clues. And one of those clues, Jeremy, are the authors and books that leaders read. What are some of the books that have influenced you in your business? Yeah. So, you know, I, uh, it's interesting. I write books, so I'm, I'm right. writing one right now. And when I write, I can't read other things. I, I read historical fiction Oh, interesting. And, or I read uh, biographies. So I've been really impacted, uh, by Dwight Eisenhower and, um, just his fortitude and his compassion for everyone in his system. Like he was a Supreme commander but during his reign as president, not one person was killed. I think maybe one in eight years, one soldier was killed or run over by a truck. And that was it of eight years. Oh, and wow. he was Supreme commander, but he built um, infrastructure and he built systems and he built processes that catapulted um, this, this country. And he did it with compassion. And I really, really uh, value leaders like that. So I, I get charged and I'll, what I'll do is I'll go in for two or three years reading everything about that one leader and then I'll move on to another one. And so biographies and historical fiction are where I spend my time. Well, I love that strategy actually, right? Because you're modeling after leaders and trying to identify maybe systems or what strategies they use that maybe that yeah. you can implement or, 
or learn. So what does the future hold for you? Any, are you working on any special projects? Yeah, so I have the next book that's coming out is dealing with the um, work styles that we have. And I've, I've found there's seven work styles that you can choose from. So teaching people how to design their life so they can choose the work that best fits their life instead of uh, letting lifestyle be the tail that wags the dog. Um, and so it's really a concept that's, that's really uh, catching uh, wind and I'm excited to put it out there. So the first of the year, I'll have that book coming out and it's, I'll have a course and a book and all of it, but it's really a resume building. How do, how do you either move up or how do you move over into the work that you want that best fits your life? Wow, I love that. Certainly from the, the work style, right? Because people talk about lifestyle, but never work style. And sometimes maybe that fits in the hustle on the grind, but it sounds like with your strategy that when you have the work style, it's kind of, you just flow into your lifestyle. That's right. Yeah. And it gives you an option. I mean, some people don't have choices. Some people, uh, change is forced on them or some people don't have opportunities. I get that. Uh, but uh, a lot of people just haven't been told that there are other options or how to get there. And I like to help people understand change and understand transition and how to actually get into the place that you, you want to be. Wow. I'll be looking forward to um, reading that book when it comes out. Absolutely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> so if our listeners wanted to um, connect with you, which I'm sure they will, what's the best way for them to be able to reach out? Yeah. So um, again, the best way to find me and us is uh, giant, coach.com slash obstacle builder. That's the best way. Okay. And, uh, and so um, all of that leads to me and us and the world that, that is giant and our team. Well, excellent. Well, Jeremy, thank you again for sharing all your strategies, tips, and resources, helping our listeners to break through their obstacles, build resilience and achieve success. Thanks, Warren. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Well, again, this is your host, Warren Wandling saying until next time, be resilient.